I'm Fiona Sweeney. I'm the Director of Marketing for NJuice, uh, which is essentially our uh, category uh, terminology in Kerry. And basically what I look after and my team look after is what we call bringing the outside in. We bring insight about food and beverage categories all over Europe, all over the globe, into our business to understand then how we define our category strategies, define our value propositions, and then actually drive innovation into those categories. And that's what I want to talk to you about today, is basically driving insight into action in, uh, in an innovation um, landscape. So, anybody here aware of Jeremy Gucci? No nodding. Okay. Jeremy Gucci founded Trendhunter.com, one of the biggest um, dot coms for uh, basically forecasting trends. So Trendhunter have been doing a lot of work on looking at intervals of change, the pace of change. And according to Trendhunter, we are actually in history's highest rate of change. Change can be exciting, but change can really bring disruption. And as we know in our industry, we've seen incredible change over the last 10 years, not even 10 years. We've seen social media bloggers, influencers, we've seen mobile ordering, we've seen drone delivery, bot delivery, smart appliances, their list is endless. Change is very exciting. And as we said, change can bring disruption, but there is more change coming and change is actually really much needed in our industry. Is it working now? There we go. So the future of our industry is facing some real challenges, um, as you can see. And as of all of you, I'm sure, are aware, at Kerry, we want to understand what those challenges are more deeply. We want to look to the future to meet those challenges head on. We've started a, an agenda called the Foresight Agenda in Kerry, which is basically looking to the future to help our customers innovate to grow by a better understanding of what that future looks like, a better understanding of what the industry landscape will be, of what consumer needs and experiences of food will be. And actually what we've done is we've, we've enlisted the help of what we call future analysts alongside our internal experts across five continents and 250 product groups to build what we call our foresight agenda. And Foresight basically identifies five big themes that are going to shape the future of food and drink in, uh, in, the, in the industry. So alternative abundance. Alternative abundance, we know that there is enormous pressure on our resources. We need to look at different and alternative ways to find a supply that will meet our future needs more sustainably. We need to reinvigorate what we no longer use and we need to protect what we have. Artisanal to scalable. So micro is now mainstream. Uh, niche brands and industries are winning. So how can we look to the innovators in food, the creators, the inspiration, to help bring their tools, their processes into our everyday food experiences and make that allow and make that achievable for everybody? Authentic technology. So technology has been around for decades. You've got smoking. You've got fermentation. But over the past um, couple of years, and I, I'd probably say the last decade, it has gotten a bit of a bad rap. Um, 
you know, the, the food industry has moved on, the world has moved on, but the story of food seems to be stuck. We need to reframe that story and we need to use authentic technology to help us to do that. Food trust. I don't think anybody in the room doesn't know of some food scandal or a transgression that has happened in the food industry over recent years. And this has led to a call for more transparency and reassurance. Value and opportunity comes when we look at openness and transparency. We need to provide a, a future um, transparency and reassurance in our value chain and our food value chain to bring about more, I suppose, reassurance with our, with our consumers and personalised nutrition. So we've seen the convergence of pharma and food in a big way. Again, there is opportunity if we look at food science, meeting the medical community and big data to create personalised solutions that can help drive um, our consumers in, a, in their own personal nutrition agendas. When you look at the consumer behaviour happening now, you can see why those future themes are very important. So we've looked at four... Uh, five, I should say, four, we skipped one, four big macro uh, trends, authenticity, healthfulness, sustainability, and enjoyment. So basically, authenticity. Consumers are looking for more simplicity, more transparency, more naturalness. Basically, they want products that have ingredients in there that they can understand, that they can read, and probably find in their, their own food cupboards at home. Healthfulness. Healthfulness is now much more holistic and more preventative in focus. Consumers aren't looking at just removing things from their diet that are considered baddies like sugar, fat, and salt. They're actually looking at removing things from their diet that they feel don't allow them to feel and be at their best. And they also have a better understanding of the functionality of food. So they're adding things into their diet and seeking out products that allow them to actually be at their best and fit with their own personal lifestyles. Sustainability. So sustainability is absolutely a critical driver of consumer consideration now. Consumers have a much more mindful approach to their consumption and their purchase. They want and seek out brands that have a responsible and sustainable agenda, that are looking to the environment, looking to the community, and looking to animal welfare and providing that transparency. And then enjoyment, because we are all very fickle, we are complex beings. Yes, health and nutrition and authenticity are really, really important, but taste and food enjoyment are critical and will be a key driver of change. But the spectrum of enjoyment is changing. So consumers are looking at textures and different flavor experiences and profiles, and they're actually looking now at permissible indulgence. So making those enjoyment moments a little better for them. So, looking at the shifting sands, looking at the future, change isn't just an option, it's actually a necessity. So I'm sure all of you know the story behind lots of these brands up here. These are brands and companies that have not embraced change. They have not looked to the trends and embraced the future and shaped their business around what the future will be. So Kodak actually invented digital photography technology. They didn't really understand the pace that it would, would actually compete with their film technology and well, we know what happened there. Blockbuster had the opportunity to buy Netflix three times. That didn't work out for them. Nokia, Nokia were the leader in mobile phones, in smartphones at the time. Now, without upgrading, without advancing, without moving on, without, without embracing change, see what's happened there. Is anyone familiar with Xerox? This is the one that kills me. This is, this is a really it's a killer example. So Xerox decided not to deviate from their core. Xerox wanted to maintain a focus on their photocopiers. They didn't embrace the fact that they created the Alto. The Alto actually was the first invention of the concept of email. It was actually the first concept of the mouse, laid the foundations for the internet. But they decided it was all about the photocopier. They didn't IP this. This was in 1975. Ten years later, Apple came along, followed by Microsoft. Xerox still makes photocopiers. They're still great photocopiers, but think of where they could have been. So I think it is definitely something we need to do. Change is something we all have to embrace. It's probably a good time to introduce you a little bit more about Kerry. I'm sure everybody here knows something about Kerry, but for those of you who don't know us fully, what we call ourselves is the Taste and Nutrition Company. We are a global leader in for food, from food, ingredients, and food technology solutions. So basically, what we are is innovators. 
we want to help our customers grow through innovation by leveraging our foundational authentic technologies, our market insight, our route to market, our expertise in applications and solutions around processing. We have a huge amount of knowledge that we know we can help customers grow and, and navigate this pace of change. Using our insight into that foresight model, we've developed our own innovation platforms. And we research these, we ideate against these, we develop concepts against these. And the whole purpose of this is to help our customers be future ready so that they can embrace the future, that they can create more healthful, more sustainable products for their customers. And we have an innovation model that basically helps us or is the vehicle for, for fueling the, uh, the platforms and fueling the pipelines behind them. At the core of that innovation model is consumer market insight. So consumer market insight, you might think as a B2B business, is that really where you guys should be? But actually, we can't help our customers grow unless we know our customers' customers. At the root of all innovation is consumer insight. We need to know their needs, their unmet needs today and tomorrow. And then the rest of our innovation model basically looks at turning that insight into action by leveraging our unique value chain. So we have very deep and expansive um, knowledge of categories across food and beverage across the globe. We have incredible expertise in applications. So bakers, baristas, chefs, uh, food scientists. We have a very uh, big team that understand the processing technology. So our bakers have a full knowledge of products and the processing techniques. We have a whole team of scientists across chemistry, biochemistry, microbiology, sensory, flavor science, and basically what we do is we use all of this. We take our insights and we look at that through all of these lenses, a full holistic model, and that's where we get a deeper, more, under, a deeper, more integrated understanding of what those insights will lead to. Because consumer insight is so incredibly important, we have our own innovation suite of bespoke tools that allow us to really harvest and mine those insights. So we have something called Kerry Compass, which is basically a macro micro trend tool. Eat the Streets, which is a fantastic co-creation process, which I'm going to talk to you about in a little bit. Uh, Kerry Focus, so we have observation suites where we can bring consumers and customers and, and anybody who you need to uh, into these suites and observe them and, uh, as you would focus suites. We have our own bespoke research panel. Um, and we look at trend spotting, which is actually a social media mining tool, which basically uses social media and influencers and historical data to predict trends in the future. And our newest tool which is Kerry Consumer First, which is a needs state tool, a segmentation tool. I'm going to tell you a little bit more about that. So Kerry Consumer First and Eat the Streets are two of our most powerful tools. And these really help us take those insights and deliver um, them into action. So Kerry Consumer First, as I said, it's a need state tool. So basically what it does is it helps us understand how need states inform consumption behavior and then make, helps us create value propositions to help our customers innovate better. So here's a little bit about it. So another tool that we use to then take that incredibly deep 
insight around need states and consumption and occasions and take that into what actually might be tangible concepts or products is a process called rapid fire. So rapid fire is a two to four day innovation process. It's a co-creation process that we do in partnership with our customers. And essentially what it is about is inspiration, ideation, and actual concept development. So basically what we want to do with it is speed up your innovation process, fill your pipeline, and basically help you drive growth. Another little video. I think we leave it there. You get the gist. Having come from um, FMCG before I worked in Taste Nutrition, I can tell you that this is an incredible process. And I think the beauty of it is, is that it takes an insight and then surrounds that insight with all the relevant people to make it happen and to convert that insight into a product. So everybody has the category knowledge, the regulatory knowledge, the sensory knowledge, the product knowledge, and the application knowledge. And then putting it all in one place, in one room, and figuring out what you can do with it. It is an incredibly fast process and we've seen huge success. It is a really, really excellent tool. Now, not everybody has access to rapid fire, um, although if you come see us in Kerry, you will. Um, but there is, I suppose, a difficulty and, a, and, a, and a, I suppose a fear of the innovation process. And it is difficult and it is really hard to take insight into innovation in some occasions. But there are some guardrails and there are some areas that you can look at in terms of hints and tips. I've captured a few here, so basically, first of all, your insight can come from anywhere. It can come from the market dynamics, so what's going on in terms of growth? What are the trends? What's the regulatory uh, environment looking like? What are the consumer needs and unmet needs? What are your customer issues? Um, but what you have to do is you have to listen, and you have to be looking constantly, and then you have to focus. You have to refine those insights down to the one or two insights that you feel can actually be actionable. The best insights are the most simple insights, and they're the ones that you can see and feel the potential for growth in them. And then it's about fit. Does this make sense for me, my brand, my business? Will this work? Will people go, that actually makes sense when it comes from X brand or X company? And then it's about positioning. Where do you want to play? 
the market you play in can dictate flavor profiles, packaging formats, categories. It can, in, it can actually inspire so many things. So be clear on where you want to play and make sure that you use that as your guardrail and your guideline. And then about potential. Can it work? Will it make money? Will consumers buy it? Can I do it? Can I make it? And then finally, execution. Find and surround yourself with the experts, the suppliers, the partners that can help you, whether that's packaging, route to market, flavors, profiles, brands, or even agency partners to get your consumer comms up and running. Get the right people together and, ha and have that 360 approach to it. And then finally, make sure that you have the culture for change. And the culture for change is about embracing the future potential, about not just sticking with what you do well right now, but understanding what the future might actually look for, uh, look for you in, in, in that regard. So we are in history's highest rate of change, but let's make sure we do change, and let's make sure that we actually end up where we want to go and not just where we're heading. Thank you very much.